Okay, hear me out. I feel like this outfit I'm wearing today is really giving like preschool but make it chic in all the right ways. Like the bright primary red sweater with the bright blue, like deeper blue denim overalls, the blue nails, the red lip. Like I'm giving preschool but all grown up, which honestly is perfect for what we're about to do today. Thank you to the Lego group for sponsoring this video. Honestly, I could not be more excited about this video. I want to say back in like 2018 or 2019, the Lego company released Braille bricks, like Braille Lego bricks. And I was so excited about it because growing up as a young blind person, I didn't really have access to like accessible toys. And it's been so cool over the past few years to see more and more accessible toys coming out. Uh, toys that represent all different types of children. I just love it. Like it, it, it makes me so excited for the disabled youth of today. And I just wanna play with all of those toys and like take back my youth and have those experiences that I missed out on. Um, but originally the braille bricks were just, I believe for like teachers and stuff, you couldn't actually purchase it as a regular consumer until September, 2023. I can't even tell you how many of you were excitedly sharing this news with me. I got so many DMs and messages and emails. And I just love how many of you were so excited to see that the Lego group is becoming more and more inclusive with their toys. So today together, we are going to explore this because play is not just for children. In fact, I know many times I've shared here on this channel that one of my favorite quotes that I heard back when I was in high school is when I grow up, I wanna be a kid. And I just love that so much because I think so often in life, as we grow up, we forget how to like be creative and explore and have fun. And I am such a child at heart. I, I love all things like fun and, and playful and creative. And it, it's just, I don't like life to be too serious, you know? And why can't I keep playing? There's no reason we can't continue to play. Play is like a superpower. So I wanna encourage all of you to play today with me, today and every other day. So I have not opened this because I wanted to react and have this experience with all of you. I remember growing up, my brother had so many different Lego sets when I was growing up and I don't know, it's just cool to have my own now. Uh, okay, so there is actually Braille on the box and it is tactile. I'm going to link this down in the description box below in case anybody wants to pick it up. So there's like, I don't know, a little tactile, I don't know how to explain it. It's like the box has texture, like it's all different textures, but I can't actually really distinguish what it is. But then on the front here in the top left corner, it says Lego bricks, braille. And then on the top right corner, it says scan for code to play. Interesting. I'm intrigued about that. And then down in the bottom left corner, it says 287 pieces. We've got a lot of pieces in here to explore. Let's see. Okay, so inside we've got all these different, oh my gosh, Elton's getting interested. Ooh, and then there's this cardboard piece that has braille on it. So I'm gonna have to read all of that. And then I have some of the like boards, the mats where I guess you kind of get to stick all of your creations down. I know braille. I've done some videos about it in the past. By no means am I an expert. Like I'm not a braille teacher. I'm just a girl who knows braille and reads it. Uh, Basically on a daily basis, I would say I read braille of some sort. Like I'm not sitting down and reading a novel by any means. That's an audiobook for me. But for me, I use braille on a pretty much daily basis. And I really do encourage anybody who's blind or visually impaired or parents of people who are blind or visually impaired to read braille or learn braille because it is such a useful skill in my opinion. Technology is fantastic and has empowered us as a blind community and, and helped us come so far. but there is no way in my opinion to replace braille. Not only do I think it's very important to learn correct um, like grammar and literacy, but I also feel like it's very important because 
Sometimes your phone is dead. Sometimes your phone is in your purse or your pocket or you don't know where it is and you just wanna quickly be able to read something. I don't wanna to have to whip out my phone to find what button to push in the elevator. I don't wanna to have to whip out my phone to figure out which bathroom I'm going into in a public space. I just wanna quickly stick my hand out, read the braille, push the button, find the correct door, um, find the correct product. Like I don't always wanna to have to use technology so that's why I think braille is so important. So this is I think a sheet to help you learn braille. Um, there is a, scan, a code to scan. So I am gonna scan that actually, speaking of technology. Okay, so essentially that just took me to the Lego website and kind of showed me all of my options. Um, and now I'm, I wanna get playing. So I'm gonna scoot my caboose back. I'm gonna open all of this, pour it out, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I basically have four piles around me because it was four bags and I wasn't sure if they were all different so I didn't wanna mix them yet. <gasps> a G! Oh my gosh, okay. Oh my God, this is so cool. This is amazing, an N. Yeah, so there's like some punctuation and stuff in here. You guys, okay, I'm gonna try to like write some sentences while we basically chat about growing up as a, as a young blind person and my experience learning braille and the lack of accessibility and inclusivity when I was a child with media and, and toys was really difficult and it got more difficult the older I got and the more that I understood that I wasn't seeing myself, you know, because when I was really little, like I didn't know that I was different. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna write your name, mom. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna write your name. I love it, all the primary colors. Yeah. I keep getting a G and of course it makes me think of Sir Galloper Gooseman. I know Elton wishes he could play right now. Honestly, I think Braille is so cool. Like not only is it extremely functional, I just think it's so cool that we like have this language, well, not a language, a code, that we read with our fingers. I just love it. Okay, so far I've got an N. This would have been so much fun to learn Braille this way. I, I have an M and an H, I need an A. This would have been way more fun than how I learned braille, to be honest. Don't get me wrong, I had, I had some great teachers through the years, but there's nothing like learning through play. I think play is such a great way to explore your creativity, your self-expression, and to learn. I'm somebody who learns by doing and I learn by having fun. And so this would have been such a, a great way for me to learn. And I think also being blind can feel really isolating. A lot of us, grow up being the only blind kid in our class or the only blind kid in our school. And being able to have fun like this with the kids in your class, like they can learn and have fun with you or with your sibling, like if one child is blind and the other isn't. You know, my brother always played with Lego bricks and we could have played together while I was learning and he could learn with me. Okay, we're looking for an A, the hardest one to find thus far. Okay, I'll see you when I've spelled her name. <laughs> okay, so funny. My mom just told me there's print on these. Who knew? Not the blind girl. I had no idea. That is so funny. She's like, I can help you find an A if you really can't find it. I'm like, how? And then she told me. <laughs> She's like, I can see an A right now. Hilarious. That makes sense as to why there's like an extra bit at the end. Ah. Because I was like, why is it extra long? Yeah. Like, that was confusing me, but that makes sense. It's the space where the print letter goes. Okay, yeah, if you could find me an A, that would be great, because for some reason, I have all the other letters I need, but no A. It was an A. Okay, I'm gonna write your full name. So I'm gonna write Neve Burke. I've got a B, so I'm gonna put a space in between, because that's how you would read. <laughs> Not just in Braille, but in any language. You... Okay, now I need a U. Let's see. Such a fun way of learning Braille. I'm telling you, this is so fun. Oh my gosh, you can even stack them together. Huh, so you can like build up just like you can with any other kind of Lego bricks. Okay, you've got to tell me, you guys, are you going to get these? I know so many people who are sighted, like they have no no reason to learn braille, but they do, they learn braille. And I think it's really cool. I, I feel like it's a, honestly a really easy code. Um, you just basically have to be good at memorizing. Like being able to sight read is pretty easy. The difficult part is being able to finger read. And that's the part that really is important to kind of start young. Like I'm so lucky that my um, family and my team all encouraged me to learn as a child, and don't get me wrong, I was very unhappy to learn. I fought 
but I'm so glad I did because as I've said now it's like such a useful skill that I use regularly. Okay, I'm looking for a U R K E. Look at me, I know how to spell my name. Ooh, what's this? Wow, what can I do with this? Huh, exploring is fun. Okay, I got an E. Of course, now I can find an A. Wait, I wasn't looking for an A. Yeah, I was. <laughs> okay, E. No, I already found the E. That's not helpful. Q, I, I again, S, I. Wow, we're finding lots of I's. Okay, Neve, I'm gonna have you tap in and help me again. Yeah. With you your sight. Know? Okay. But this is a good challenge for kids or for anybody who's trying to learn. What are you looking for, Mom? Um, U, R, and K. Be a group effort. Okay. I'll keep looking. Oh, I found an R! Yay, R. U, R, and what? Wait, no, I didn't. I found a W. <laughs> R and W are the, the same but backwards, because of course, when everything's made up of only six dots, a lot of stuff is gets creative, and also there's a lot of stuff like within context. So like, it's, it's a W, but also it's an R, <laughs> depending on which direction you flip it. But I realized it was a W, because the like flat part, that extra bit on these Lego bricks is the bottom. So that's how you can tell which direction it is and not get your letters mixed up. Ah, we got them. We found the R and the U. Oh wait, I put these too close. Are you ready to see your name, Neve? I'm so excited. N-I-A-M-H-B-U-R-K-E. Okay, ready? That's so nice. That's your name in Braille. That is so cool. Isn't that cool? It's beautiful. Something sighted people will notice that my mom keeps getting a little confused by is that they don't just have letters written in print on these, they also have numbers. And that's because again, the entire code of Braille is based on six dots. And so what happens is you recycle things. So the letter A is also the number one. The letter B is also the number two. The letter C is also the number three. And so um, you would have what's called a number symbol, number sign that goes in front of it. So that's what I was saying, how some things it's about context to know what it is. So to be able to tell the difference between whether somebody is meaning to write ABC or one, two, three, you would put a number sign ABC. And now I know it's one, two, three. I hope that makes sense. I remember when I was in senior kindergarten, which I know doesn't exist in America or so I've heard, uh, but where I grew up in Canada, we have junior kindergarten, senior kindergarten. So it's like preschool, junior kindergarten, senior kindergarten, grade one. So I was diagnosed in senior kindergarten. And so I started to learn braille and have accommodations in school at that point when I was just about to turn five years old. Um, is when I was diagnosed, right before my fifth birthday kind of timeline. And so halfway through my senior kindergarten year, SK, I started to have a vision itinerant and a, an educational assistant. And I started pre-braille training, which is where you get your fingers sensitive enough to start actually being able to read braille dots. Now these are much bigger than actual braille dots. I mean, I wouldn't say much bigger. They're quite a bit bigger, um, but that's, that's where you need to start. Like your fingers aren't sensitive enough right out of the gate to read braille as small as it is. And so when I started, you don't even start learning braille. You start getting your fingers strong and sensitive, or at least that's, that's how I did it. That's my experience. And so I can remember like playing with bubblegum scented pink Play-Doh. And I can remember playing with fabric books and having to tell the difference between different fabrics just by feel. And then it went to tactile books. So it was books that had large high color contrast print, tactile images um, that were really bright colors. And then it would have like a letter or a word in braille. And that's how it all slowly started for me. So you do start with braille that would be around this size so that your fingers can get used to it. And then you slowly go down to the normal size that is braille. And people often wonder why we as blind people don't just read the alphabet, but 
tactile. Um, and the reason is because in order for you to feel the difference between print A, B, C, D, E, uh, when it's tactile, it has to be huge. So Braille actually allows us to read um, in a more small, concise size where my just one fingertip can scan over it and I can read the entire letter versus having to slowly trace the shape of each letter. So that is why we've got Braille. That's why it exists as it is instead of just tactile letters and tactile print. It was so funny when the Lego group reached out to see if I'd be interested in working with them. I was telling my boyfriend, he was like, this is the best sponsorship you've ever had because he has been a big fan of Lego bricks from childhood all the way to now. I really do feel like there is a Lego kit for everybody out there. So I'm gonna have to bring him these braille bricks and see if he has fun playing with them as much as I did. Like I was saying, I believe, and Lego Group believes, that play is a superpower. And I unlocked mine by healing my inner child, by getting to actually play and explore with an inclusive toy that allows you to learn in a way that's fun, that allows you to do something that's just like all the other kids. And um, I really appreciate that. So thank you to the Lego Group for sponsoring this video. Neve Burke, Elton John, thank you for being in my life. Mm -hmm. Thank all of you for being in my life. And if you would like to unlock your inner play superpower, then head to lego.com and see what sparks your inner joy. And until next time, you can click over here to see this video or over here to see this one. Love you guys. Bye.